JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 26th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained versus CHF, JPY and Euro, while it underperformed against AUD, CAT, GBP and NZD in that order. Now, the strengthening of the risk linked to Ozil, Uni, Kiwi and the Pound combined with the weakening of the safe havens, Yen and Franc suggests that market sentiment turn turned around yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major European indices um, uh, under our radar as well as uh, the UK FTSE 100 tra traded in the green, but that was not the case during the US session. All three of uh, Wall Street's uh, main indices slid, with Nasdaq falling the most. The picture today in Asia was more on the mixed uh, side, with China, Shanghai trading with Asian, excuse me, with um, with China, Shanghai trades trading positive, and the others uh, trading unchanged or um, or negative. Now, the, the rebound in European shares may have been the result of upbeat earnings from Ericsson and Logitech, but the slide in Wall Street confirmed that the investors are more worried about the Fed's future plans. The ongoing, the ongoing tensions in Ukraine may have also kept uh, weighing on market sentiment. And today, market participants turned more cautious as... Um, as indicated by the Asian uh, performance, perhaps taking the sidelines ahead of the FOMC uh, decision later, later in the day. Now, as we noted yesterday and the day before, following hoggish remarks by several policymakers lately, we do expect a hoggish outcome. We believe that policymakers will confirm the case for a March hike and more hikes to come during uh, the year. However, with market participants already anticipating four quarter point uh, hikes by the end of the year, we see ample room for uh, disappointment. Let's not forget that according to the latest dot plot, Fed officials see only three hikes by December. So anything suggesting that policymakers may not proceed as fast as the market currently anticipates could result in a rebound in equities and a pullback in the US dollar and other safe havens. Even if the outlook uh, matches expectations, we, we could still experience a sell the rumor by the fact uh, market reaction. And uh, so, so in order for equities uh, to fall notably lower and the dollar to accelerate north in the aftermath of the Fed decision, Powell and his colleagues may need to appear even more aggressive than the current pricing suggests, a case we see as unlikely. Now, ahead of the FOMC decision, we have another central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this is the Bank of Canada. At its latest meeting, this bank kept interest rates and and changed at 0.25%. And in the statement accompanying the decision, the language was uh, more cautious than previously, with officials expressing concerns over the economic impact of the Omicron coronavirus variant. That said, the new strain proved to be milder than initially estimated, which combined with a notable improvement in the Canadian economy and further acceleration in last week's inflation data, allowed traders to assign a strong chance for a rate increase at this gathering. Thus, it will be interesting to see whether officials will indeed hit the hike uh, button at this uh, gathering or not. 
We believe that they can indeed raise rates today. However, with such an action nearly fully priced in, we don't believe that the loony will gain much on uh, that. For that to happen, we believe that policymakers will need not only to hike, but to also signal that they are ready to continue with more liftoffs in the, in the months to come. Now, as for the rest of today's events, as every Wednesday, we get the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. And expectations are for a 0.728 million barrels slide following a 0.515 million barrels increase the week before. Now, tonight, during the Asian morning Thursday, we have New Zealand's CPI for the fourth quarter. The quarter over quarter rate is forecast to have declined to 1.3% from 2.2%, but the year over year one is anticipated to have risen by nearly a whole percentage point to 5.7% from 4.9%. Remember that the RBNZ has already raised uh, rates twice in the post in the post uh, pandemic era and further acceleration in New Zealand CPI will confirm uh, the case for more rate hikes um, with the next one most likely to be delivered at the upcoming gathering. Something like that could benefit the Kiwi, but whether it could hold on to those gains, it could depend on the broader market sentiment and perhaps the outcome of the Fed decision. Ne uh, let's not forget that the Kiwi is a risk-linked uh, currency. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.